This is going to be Module 8 Bayesian Analysis, and what I want to show you is that this is no different than conditional probability. You've learned how to do it. This is supposed to be hard stuff. The hard part about it is the language. I'm getting used to that. They purposely try to mess you up. Okay, so in the language here, now let's pick a problem. Let's go with problem number eight. Plantation Foods has 843 employees total. Okay? 255 have degree, college degree. Okay, 588 don't. Add them up, 13, 14, carry one day. Okay, that's everybody. So that means we're going to have degree, no degree. It's going to be something else. 255 with a degree, 588, 843. Okay? Now, what else are they looking at? Of those with college degrees, 60% of men, okay, men, women. Okay, or male, female. Okay, what are we saying? Of those with college degrees, 60% men. Okay, so that's how we break this up. So 255, this is 60, 40. Okay, so 255 times 0. 0.6 is 30, 33, carry to 1. 3 is 15, 153, right? 30, 33, 15. Yeah, so this is 153, so this is 102. Check that. 4 times that is 0, 22. Yeah. Okay? 102. So we've got to break these down. Next one. Of those with no degrees, 25% men, 75% women. Okay? So 588 times 25 or divided by 4. It's 1, 4, 7. So when I add this across, I get 300. And then subtract this out of this. That gives me 543. Add them down, 843. Okay. All right. So we've got it. We've got the table built. All right. So the 4060 was how do I break the 255 down? This is how I bit. Now I own the data. Rather than going with formulas, build the table and then you can answer the questions. Okay. What are they going to say? Now, the key is, they gave it to you this way and they prepare it. What they're going to do is they're going to come in from this end. Right? That's the tricky part. Watch this. Human Resources selects, selects an employee at random to interview about health insurance. The person selected is a woman. So you know it's a woman. Right here. Okay? That means I can only use these numbers. If you have the discipline to set it up this way, you can't screw this up. My answer is going to be something over 543. What are they asking? Okay. They found a woman. What's the probability she does not have a college degree? 441 over 543. Okay? And if you look at how they tell you how to do this in the book, you're going to be going through a bunch of formulas and you're going to go cross-eyed and trying to figure out what's going on. Put it into the table and read carefully. This is misdirection. This is classic problems to screw you up. They break it down in terms of degree and no degree. They give you some way to get the inside part, and then they assume you're going to come in the other way. Okay? Let's try another one, since these are supposed to be hard. Look at number nine. This is tricky in that they use all percentages. What do we have? Number nine, Perry Manufacturing. 28% are sales and admin. Okay? 72% are production. Okay? Or if we want whole numbers, we can go with 28, but you can do it either way. And I'll show you a way to get rid of all the decimals. But I want to, let's just leave it like this for now. Okay. The company offers a free six-month fitness for all employees. 40% of sales and admin participate. Okay. 
participate, not participate. Okay? You get a wellness program. And are they going to be in? Okay, what did I say? 40% of these, that means 60% of these. 64% of production staff participate. Okay? Now, this is 28%, 40%. I'd have to add something to that. These numbers are not usable. 40, 60 is what do I do with the 28%? This is how do I break this apart? Okay. This is going to be 100%. So I'm going to have 0.4 times 28. It's 11.2 or 0.112. Okay, or 11.2%. So this is going to be 0.158. Okay, or let's do it in four decimal places. Okay. 64% of this. Okay, and add this down. And add it across, that's 9, 98, whoops, 17 carry 1, let's see, did I do this wrong? 8, 28, 12 carry 1 is 43, it's 10 carry 1 is 6, 46, 2, 4608, 70, 25, 92, this is 26, okay, this is 16, 8, right? 11, 2, 16, 8, yeah. So this would be 4272. So when I add it across, I get my one. Okay, look at that. Ain't that a mess working with? Before I answer the questions, let's, let me show you a handy dandy way of how to do this. Okay, participate, not participate. Sales and admin staff, production staff. Okay, now, if I look at these numbers, they're talking about 28% here, 40% inside of here. Two decimal places, two decimal places. So that's four decimal places altogether. So if I take one with four zeros, Say, okay, the company's got 10,000 employees. If 28% are sales then that's 2,800 and 7,200. Why would I want to do this? I'm not going to have any decimals this way. Okay, 40% of this. is 1,120. Subtract that from that and I get 1,680. Okay. 64% of 7,200 is 40, 4,608. That gives me 2,592. Add these down. And add them across and I get 10,000. Okay? That's a lot easier to deal with. But you notice they're really the same number except that I have no decimals. Okay, so let's work with this. I set this up took my percentages and jacked up the size of the number so I didn't have any decimals. All right, how can I answer this now? Remember, they set it up this way. They're gonna come in this way. So they're gonna ask me something about somebody participating and not participating. Watch. At the end of the program, an employee is selected at random to assess the value of the program. The person is selected from those who participated in the program. Your answer's coming out of this column. Okay, find the probability that it's production staff. 4608 over 5728. Simple as that. If you have the discipline, set it up this way, you can't screw up. Whereas if you try following the formulas in the book, you flip a coin, because you've got about a 50% chance of getting it wrong. Okay, I'm teasing.
teaching you guerrilla mathematics. Okay, next problem is, let's look at number 13. A football game, okay? Plays 60% home, 40% away. Okay? Then they're going to talk about winning and losing. Okay, what are they telling us? Typically wins 80% of the home game and wins 55% of the away games. What's that telling me? Okay, let's start off. I don't want decimals. Okay. I know they don't play 100 football games in a year, but let's start out with that. Okay, let's say I've got 60 home and 40 away for 100 games. Okay? How do I break the 60 down into win and lose? 80% of wins. So 0.8 times this gives me 48 and 12. Right, twenty percent losses, fifty-five percent of this, forty times that gives me twenty-two and eighteen. Okay, now add them down. Okay, what's my winning percent? Seventy over a hundred, or seventy percent? What are they going to ask? Okay, if the team wins on a certain Sunday, okay, what's the probability played at home? So take your numbers from here. Forty-eight out of seventy. Okay, because I had 70 wins. Or if I played 10 games, I'd have seven and three. This would 4.8 and 1.2. See, I'd get it up big enough so that we don't have any decimals. Okay, but you notice they give us this. You get the percentages to fill the table in. Then you have to add down or vice versa. If they're giving it to me this way, they're gonna come in this way. So they're gonna tell me whether I won or lost. And read it. What's the probability? Okay, if a team wins. If a team loses, what's the probability I played away? 18 out of 30. What's the probability I played at home? 12 out of 30. If I won away, 22 out of 70, 48 out of 70. Okay? Everybody follow that? That's how we do this. Now, what I want to do is the most important part of this. You're going to have problem 38 and I want to take my time. I want to do something similar to that. But this is really important, especially for those of you who are going to be in a nursing program. You have to understand this. It's going to come back to bite you in the butt many times. This is the concept of false positive and false negative. Okay? And you have to understand it to explain it to patients. Okay. Now, what happens here, the big problem is language, again. Because you've got two things. This is for anything with lab tests. You've got a disease or a condition. Let's say, for example, a pregnancy test. You're either pregnant or not pregnant. Okay? So are you positive or negative? If you say positive or pregnant, yeah. Then, but you take a test. Now, the test results are either going to be positive or negative. Okay? So if we put it this way. On the condition, yes, no. This is, do I have it or not have it? Whatever the heck I'm talking about, okay? And then here, this is test results. Positive or negative. Okay, my population altogether it's going to be 100% or 1.0000, okay? Now, what are they going to give me? What's a false positive and a false negative? You don't know whether you got the disease. You take a test. Okay, if I test positive, that's, you're going to get the test results. Do I have it or not have it? Well, if I test positive and I have it, that's right. If I test negative and don't have it, that's right. These are the two correct things. What about these? If I test positive and I don't have it, this is a false positive. If I test negative and I really have it, that's a false negative. Okay? Now, 
This is the dangerous one. If we're testing for AIDS or cancer, they test you and it says you're clean and you really got it. Whoa, you got a problem. Okay, so we got to try to make sure this is tiny. This, on the other hand, is how many people do we catch by accident? Okay, if you're testing for cancer, test comes back and says, yes, you got it. And you say, whoa, we got it. Okay, now you stop and think. Happens all the time. If you're doing uh, testing for breast cancer, first test is a uh, breast exam. Do I have any lumps in my breast? If I have lumps in my breast, yes, I tested positive. What's the chances? They don't automatically assume. They send it out for further testing. So they take these people and retest all of these. They do a biopsy and send it out. If it's a guy and they're doing a colonoscopy, you got polyps. Yes. Send it out to see for a biopsy on the polyps to see if they're cancerous. Okay? False positives come up all the time. It isn't something good, but it just means that you're in the high risk group. They've got to do follow up tests. Okay, let's put some numbers to this and show you what happens because this is confusing somewhat. Okay, we're talking about what they have to tell you is three pieces of information false, positive, false, negative, and percent of population with condition. Okay. That's the three things. They can give you a lot more information. This is all we need to do. Okay, so let's say that a half of 1% have AIDS. Okay, let's make this very serious. And only one half of the population has it. Okay, we've got a good test. Chance of false positive is 0 0.00. I want to do numbers different than what you got in the book. They're saying false positive is negative is 07, false is 05. Okay. 003, false, negative 005. Okay? That's all they're giving them. Everybody with me? Chance of false positive. I've got a real good test for AIDS. False positive is 0 0.003, false, negative 005. And a half of 1% have this. So this would be 005 of population. Okay. Okay. HIV positive, not HIV positive. Okay, look at this. 005 is the population. So this is 0 0.005 of this. So I take 1 and multiply by 0 0.005. I got this, so that means 995. Okay, have it. Now, this is false positive, is down here, 0 003 of this. So I've got to multiply 995 times 0 003 to get this. This is 15. Carry to 1 is 28, carry to 2 is 29, and I get six decimal places, 002985. I got to subtract that from 995. And get 982015. Okay? Now, up here, I'm breaking this up and I've got 005 times this, 0, 0, 005 and 0, 0, 005 is 25 with six decimal places. That means subtract that from 0, 0, 005. And then add these down. Look at these numbers. How do I avoid ugly numbers like that? Okay. 
All right. Look at this. False positive is three decimal places. Percent of the population is three decimals. Okay, when I multiply, I'm going to go six decimal places. If I don't want decimals, over here, take a one and six zeros. So I'm taking a million people. Okay, now let's break this down. Of the population, zero, zero, five. Okay? Zero, zero, five has that. So multiply zero, zero, five times a million, and I get 5,000 people with AIDS, 995,000 without AIDS, instead of zero, 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 uh, zero, zero, 005 and 995. I'm talking 5,000 out of a million. Okay? Now, let me just show you. The chance of a false negative is zero, zero, 005. I'm going to miss zero, zero, 005 of this. So if I multiply that times this, I'm going to get 25. And I'm going to get 4,975. Okay? In other words, I've got to catch 5,000 people. I'm going to get 4,900, I'm going to miss 25. Of the 995,000, I'm going to pick up 003, okay? So 003 times that gives me what? 2,985 that I got from there. How many showed up negative? 9, 982,015. So when I add these down, I get 982,040. 10, carry to 1, 16, carry to 1 is 9, carry to 1 is 7. Okay, see how this shows up with these numbers? 007960, oh, out of a million. To me, this is a lot easier to read. Okay, but remember how we got this. Of my, what talked about the whole population? One half of 1%. So if I've got a million people, one half of 1%, zero, zero, 005 times this gives me 5,000 people get AIDS. Okay, I give them my test. I'm going to catch most of them. I'm going to miss zero, zero, 005 or 25 out of 5,000. I'm going to catch 4,975. Pretty good test. Out of a million people, I'm only missing 25. Now, these people are the ones that don't have it. Of those with the false positive, I'm going to be correct on this many, but I am going to pick up nine, nine. This is 992. Check my arithmetic. Yeah, because it's got to add across. Okay, I multiplied wrong. Quick. Okay. I'm going to be right on 992,015. I'm going to miss on 2,985. Okay, these are the people who don't have AIDS, but who are going to be told you tested positive. Okay, in the old days, they used to send out the stuff. You imagine, these people could have committed suicide. You got to do, what you have to do is figure out, say, okay, this isn't good news. You got bad news here. But what's the chance you really have it? Of those who tested positive, 7,960, what's the probability you really have AIDS? It would be this divided by this. Or this is the chance that you're not in there. Okay? Comes out to be something like about, what, 40% or something like that. In other words, so there's a pretty good chance. Say 35, 40% something. You know, you can figure out 2,985 out of this. That's how you interpret it. So, if you test positive, you're going to retest because you're catching a lot of people with the false positives. If you tested negative, the chances that you don't have it is so, so small. But this is where they come up on all of these tests that are high risk. After a certain age, like for example, males with prostate, uh, to catch prostate cancer, they want colonoscopy. After 40 years old, they want to test you. After 50, they do it every five years. After 60, they want to do it every two years. Uh, if you showed up with polyps, they want to test you every year, okay? As women get older, you have to take pap smears more often. You have to do uh, uh, breast exams more often. You're doing things to try to catch the cancer. This is where the chance of missing it is fairly small, but regular examinations will get you, you'll catch it somewhere else. You want to catch it as early as possible, and the test is designed to keep this number as small as possible. However, you're going to have a lot of people inconvenienced by having such an 
a uh, fine-tuned test. And this is what you've got to understand. So again, we start out with, what did they give me? 0 0.005 of the population has AIDS. Okay? And then false positive zero zero three. Because I got three decimal places here, three here, I need six. So I take a one with six zeros. I got a million people. Multiply this by the zero zero five, and I've got 5,000 who have it, 995,000 who don't. Then the false positive, false negative, what do I do with these? Okay? False negative of these 5,000, I'm going to miss 25. Of these, I'm going to pick up by accident this many. Add these down, and when you test positive or test negative, you're dealing with these numbers to get your answer. Okay? So if I tested positive, the probability of not having AIDS would be this divided by that. If I tested negative, it would be this divided by that of not having it. And you can see this turns out to be 9999. Okay? You can review that over, but this, if you're in... If you're going to be dealing in public health or in medical profession, you better understand this because this deals with any type of lab test you're going to work with. Okay? And that's the end of Module 8. Let's quit. Thank you.